Hello everybody, it's SD Met Haven here today, and I've been playing a lot of Outriders. You know, I'm not I haven't been uploading as much. The last video I put out was kind of like the last time I played tanks, other than Saturday. Well that's was it la no, it's Friday. Ah, I lost track of time. It is what it is. Okay, so Devastator classes, builds, checking out stuff. Keep in mind I can solo uh cat fifteen. So category fifteen, whatever they want to call it. I can outright solo it without a problem and gold almost every single one of them that I play except for boomtown since they uh, decreased the time uh, Kim plant I can still get it within the time within about 30 seconds of the time so this builds absolutely monstrous you can also achieve this build with tier 2 mod variants as well so starting off we have arms and anomaly for critical shots you know 19,000 anomaly for six seconds and along with that, we're using um, power assimilation going down. We're going to take a look here. We have untamed power, Earth's legacy, increase the range of earthquake, tainted blood for the 25% additional damage towards bleeding targets, and double jump for gravity leap. Jumping down, let's take a look. We got blood shock and ground crush for earthquake to get a bleed effect and to increase the damage of earthquake. On the booties... We have Damage Absorber, and Earthquake can be used one more time. So, basically able to double activate both of my abilities. And I only have one use for Gravity Leap, and that's Relocation and Additional Damage. So, I would buff the damage of Gravity Leap, but I just I don't find the point to buffing it because of all the bonuses I get. So, with Untamed Power, as I hit the ground... It does the extra amount of anomaly damage that it has with it, along with that, you know, not really worried about buffing the damage, because once we put bleed on them, they're just going to get hit for about 700,000 on a category 15. But if you're on a lower category, for the, on the lower tiers, this combination still works out. But rather than running the double jump, you can get away with running the actual extra damage. Now, let's take a look at the helmet real quick. Let's go over some... Tier 2 traits. So yeah, Tier 2 traits that you're able to use to basically get the same effect that can help you out playing as a Devastator with a bleed build. Alright, so jumping over, let's go ahead and mod gear. So rather than Anomaly and Arms, having that in place, you'd be better off running a reju Rejuvenation. So 14,158 Firepower, 7,000 Anomaly, and 41,000 Armor. This is what I was running prior to this. So it, it's additional armor along with that gives you... It, it's just an all-around buff each time your health is replenished. And if you're using a bleed build, you're going to be healing. And this is going to be constantly in effect with only a two-second downtime every single 10 seconds. Now, to take over for power assimilation, we can actually come down. Depending if you're playing with a teammate or not. If you're playing with a teammate and he's a pyromancer... Twice as hot is just as good, just because your melee is a skill, you're going to be double hitting Earthquake, and it's just going to be dirty, because it's just extra damage stacked on top of everything that you're doing. So, while I am lost inside the tree here, just having a brain fart looking. Uh, okay, Blood Potion. Blood Potion can be really good to get your survivability up. So... If you're running Rejuvenation, you can also do Blood Potion stacked on top of it, and that will help you out quite the amount. There's one more trait. I can't remember where it's located. It's somewhere in here. Freaking hate this. It's obnoxious. Oh, cover for more than five seconds. Okay, receive 9,000 Anomaly when you're out of cover. So Stand Tall is a pretty good one, but cover every once in a while. Super nice. Just depends. Well, then again, you are a Devastator. That's the reason why you're here. You are tanky. You do not care. It's how it goes. I hate this freaking tree. You know what? There's a really good way to fix this. Let's just pause, and then we'll continue once I find what I'm looking for. I found it. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, so critical stack. Critical shots build up 5 second stacking effect that grants you 3,500 anomaly and 7,723 firepower bonuses. Stacks up to 5 times. Keep in mind... You know, continuously firing while your abilities are in cooldown to get that anomaly bonus, it, it's the way to do it. But with this build, your your gun is going to be the least amount of damage. The 5% <clears throat> critical, 
critical chance that you have. It, it's just going to be like, hopefully you can get like two, three, four crits in. Unless you're versing uh, humanoid enemies that, you know, the weak spot. Shoot them in the face. Problem solved. Um, oh, crap. God, I forgot. K. Untamed power against um, ironclads and anything that has armor. Once you melee, this actually breaks the armor immediately. So, untamed yeah, untamed power is super bad, eh? Okay, there we go. There was three. Was that three? Did I go over three? We did. Blood Potion. Retrieve. That was four. Okay, four perks. And that's all tier two. That's a lot of freaking perks. Alright, so coming over here. Uh, Earth's Legacy, nice and simple. You see Untamed Powers right there. So along with that, you would actually run Rejuvenation and Brain Fart. Rejuvenation and Crit Stack. So, you know, try and get a helmet that's got everything you want on it. Gonna help out. Okay, so coming down here, <clears throat> this is gonna be really simple for tier two. Uh, tier two, rather than tainted blood, you would actually go for bloody boost. Where is bloody boost? There's bloody boost. So it's a 15% bonus rather than a 25, so it's not that big of a deal. And then rather than double jump, you would actually run either life absorption or human comment to increase your damage. Don't worry about the bleed, because if you do the cooldown reduction in all your gear, uh, you're going to have a second-second cooldown on Earthquake, or a 6.5. It's pretty quick. So along with that, let's head down over to the hands. Yeah, so two Tier 1 mods. You know, I mean, if you're lucky to get a Tier 1 mod right here that has the effect that you want, so either the increased skill damage or you have the Blood Shock. So the Ground Crusher, Blood Shock, and your skill one. Now, jumping over to the booties, the Earthquake, this is actually one I had to pre-install. It came with Damage Absorber right on it. So, that would basically be the setup right there for all your Tier 2 mods. Now, with the weapon, I'm running Fortress with the Tier 2 Improved Bleeding. Uh, Fortress receive up to 43% uh, damage bonus based on your armor rating. So, it, I used to run Rejuvenation, but I took it off because I had the... Uh, Power Assimilation and Arms and Anomaly, which I might be adding it back pretty soon, but it is what it is right now. Now, the primary, this is actually just a little bit of a gun built with, you know, you, you can get away with, like, running the Lightning Strike on it or Death Chains combined just to give you extra damage against mobs that you need to take down as quick as you can off to the side, and you don't want to waste your skills to be able to do it. The pistol, I use this basically just to get in the position. It's nothing really too fancy. It's just there. It's a space cowboy. I like it. Well, I hope that went over quite a bit there. I'm lost myself. Don't you worry about it. Ah, uh, look, front line. Let's go do front line. This is going to be fantastic. We're going to go for some Malik. Okay, so we have... Th this is an in-game build that I'm right now running. It's not complete yet, but it's on its way. But with the Tier 2 mods, you can basically get the same effect. And if you're building up your Devastator, this can just help you out a whole crap ton. With the Tier 2 mods I mentioned, yeah, you can go nuts. Uh, your weapon, though, getting bleed on your weapon is going to really help you out. And then for a secondary trait, any damage perk you choose. Or you can run Anomaly Convert of the Firepower just to give you that extra little bit of damage out of your gun. Which is literally the first row, first one on the very far left. Alright, skip this cutscene. Screw that. Let's go. So this expedition is a little, little bit harder. So, I, I, yeah, I like that we chose this one. Alright, so shockwave, shockwave. And that's just two of them with the bleeds going off. And fortress right now is taking effect. But even without fortress and without the set bonus... You're still going to be looking at about 15,000 damage on your uh, bleeds. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. And speaking of which, I did run without the set bonus for a little while to test it out. And yeah, I was getting about 14,000 off the bleeds, which really, the set bonus doesn't improve your melee. We're going to take a look at the skill tree after we're done with this. So if you want to, you can fast forward and just, you know, skip the entire uh, scene. Oh, I used two of them. Rip. No, you don't. Oh, I completely forgot to mention this. If you melee right before you get hit by a captain or whatever, you can basically completely counteract any stun effect that they try to apply.
So the ironclad. Captain's got a lot more health than ironclads. But, you know, taking down an ironclad this fast is actually pretty nice. Especially whenever it's solo 15. So apply the bleed effect with the melee. And since the melee does count as a skill, it's going to proc that untamed power and everything else going off all at the same time. Plus it applies a bleed effect. So if your abilities are in cooldown and you need to try and get a little bit of bleed out to get some health up, melee. Okay, those guys are going to want to rush us, so we're, they're just going to come nuts. So since he got in the 5 meter radius, that was untamed power that broke off the armor right there. Literally doesn't even matter what the damage is, it just rips it off immediately. Run up, we're going to hit the golem to get the ability to go off, because golem is considered a skill. Along with that, we're going to hit him with the melee to apply bleed. And since they're both within range of our unbuffed gravity leap, they both die. And melee is going to be a big part of this just because it's going to apply a bleed effect right away. And once you apply that bleed effect, it's going to give you this extra damage across the board. Plus, my melees are hitting for about 200 to 300,000 depending on what debuffs are on the enemies or... Like, what buffs I have. I have seen a couple of my melees jump up to about 600,000. Pop a melee. And then since Gravity Leap's got such a wide area of effect, it's going to hit everybody inside there. That's why I'm not worried about buffing the damage of Gravity Leap. I don't even think it needs to be brought up. You can use that to just get extra damage out. Like the Untamed Power, a couple of the Devastator builds I've seen on Reddit, they don't use it. And whenever it comes down to close quarters combat, I mean, don't get me wrong, the bleed effect is enough to take them down, but the extra damage against the captains whenever you get close enough to do melee or activate skills and get in their face because you're trying to get the extra max health or you're running damage resistance on your setup and, you know, it relies on distance to target that really helps out. Get outside the range. Now we're going to get back in the range. Going to hit him with the melee, reset that bleed, line up everybody that we can inside that uh, earthquake double shot. You want to try and make sure that you're utilizing your earthquakes as much as you can. You don't want to waste it. So we're going to break off the armor. Iron Glad, jump behind him, do a double tap, and then smack away. Beautiful. Holy crap, there's still so many freaking captains. Not captains, but I don't these are these are considered elite enemies. They're not captains, but there's just so many of them. This is frontline, like all the way to the fullest. So, the last guy we hit for 214,000 with the melee, but Untamed Power also went off. I didn't get to see that number on screen, but pretty sure it was quite a bit. Got to reload my gun. I am being a Muppet on different games. Hmm. So get a little bit of a bleed effect, and as you see, 34,000, 32,000 coming off him for the bleed. Yeah, my bleed is gnarly. So right here, a little bit of a strategy, just for you Devastator players. Uh, coming over here, lining up the enemies to come down. It'll funnel them down. 
And then the only thing you gotta work on afterwards is going to be the uh, captains and a couple riflemen that just... They're, they're just absolutely obnoxious and don't like rushing you. I think rifleman mechanics are so dumb, but it is what it is. You know, we're, we're putting up with it. Along with the inventory wipes, I'm sorry if you guys had your inventory wiped. That's seriously sad. I would be sad if my inventory got wiped. Like, super sad. But stay positive about it. This game's got a lot of potential. Okay, so that bleed's just gonna knock him out. It's gonna give us enough time to run back up. <laughs> I do the same thing over here every single time. God, he's ugly. You again. What a waste of your last words. So right there, the captain that was off to the left, he's already half health just by the splash of everything that we were doing. And if you're on a lower tier, I mean, sure, but that was mostly the bleeds, uh, a little bit of the untamed power going off. And right there, we can probably just avoid him now because he's just bleeding to death. And now just clean up. So the submachine gun, as I said, it's just set up for cleanup for any of the leftover mobs that you have. I fought last time? The one who nearly buried me alive? Am I gonna have to dig you out of the rubble again? Not this time. I'll try to he sung it. his last. Access and the granted. pause hours. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we got. Great. You know, fingers then, crossed, it's like a four drop. Come on. Can you explain to me why that 
Well, that's 25% for you. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not too worried about it. Now, jumping over to the skill tree, let's actually take a look at the class here. So we're running Earthquake, Golem, and along with that, Gravity Leap. So Earthquake's got a really fast cooldown. Gravity Leap's got a decently fast cooldown. And then we got 20 seconds up here on Golem. That is all of our cooldown reductions that we have as well. Um, I am missing one piece of gear to get that cooldown down to a 6 second cooldown for uh, Earthquake, which would be really nice. So, starting off, you know, you have to do Anomaly Power. Then you're going to do cooldown for your Seismic. So, you know, getting the Earthquake a little bit further down. Along with that, Anomaly Reserver. I bombed that. Paladin for the 45% increase to your anomaly power. Along with that, another cooldown. Blah, blah, blah. So you're going to want to do bleed duration, strong arm of the law to double your melee damage. And as you saw, that melee was hitting really hard. Another, you know, endless trimmers. So you're going to be doing another earthquake buff for your cooldowns. Along with that, I find Executioner to be a really good one to be having on. Just squeeze out the little bit of extra damage when our enemies get low health. Um, another bleed duration, bleed damage, 25% of your health has bleed, well, you receive back 25%, blah, 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 yeah, today's a day, 40% of your armor, so armor bonus of your anomaly power, along with that, we got skilled sentry, increase armor by 20%, and resistance by 20% for 10 seconds when your skill ends, so whenever you double tap your earthquake, it just, it's gnarly. And then, basically, the entire bottom tree. Yeah, it's the whole thing, the whole setup. I hope it helps you guys out a whole crap ton. And until next time, you guys, take it easy. Don't have too much fun. And if you want to catch me over on Twitch, it helps out a lot. So be my guest. Keep in mind, uh, this is the first video I've made on a different game. It's kind of weird. Going to be completely honest. But hopefully, this helps you guys out. I'll probably put out another one in the future with nothing but purple gear to show it off. How to get away with doing a purple setup. And not needing any legendaries with only tier 2 mods to run through solo on a 15. So, don't have too much fun. Catch you next time.